You're listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and this is the podcast where you will get expert advice about the heavy duty parts that you buy and keep you informed about what's going on in the industry. This episode is sponsored by truckpartscross.com. With over 1.5 million crosses and growing every day, you can cross just about any part you're looking for. Go to truckpartscross.com. Brakes is one of the most common places that the cost per mile versus purchase price debate intersects. Over the last 20 years, I have seen fleets and repair shop owners be seduced into buying a skid of low-cost S-CAM brakes and Really, they're hoping that this lower purchase price is going to translate into more profit, that they're going to actually save money. It never seems to work out, though. Their cost per mile goes up, and in the end, they spend a lot more money on brake jobs. Brake jobs that often need to be done twice as often because the brake material is wearing out prematurely compared to the higher quality, more expensive brake material they were buying previously. This absolutely erodes profit. And any savings that was made on the purchase price is eroded by the labor of those extra brake jobs. So it's not entirely surprising that disc air brakes, which really cost quite a bit more initially when purchasing a truck or trailer, have not been readily adopted by the commercial trucking industry. We just don't see them on as many trucks and trailers as you might expect. Where automotive vehicles are practically all disc brake, I can't really think of one that isn't, commercial trucks are projected to be at 50% air disc brake in trucks by 2020 and 50% air disc brake on trailers by 2022. So why has the trucking industry been so slow to adopt air disc brake technology? Well, Bob Hicks, president of Marathon Brake, talked about this in episode four, and he explained that when you order a new truck from the dealer and you specify that that truck will come with air disc brakes, it's going to cost you approximately $1,200 to $1,500 more per axle than a traditional drum brake setup. So you can see why that causes some fleets to pause. If, for example, you're ordering a Kenworth T800 tri-drive, that could mean an additional $4,500 just so that you can have air disc brakes. Now, fleets legitimately ask themselves, will my cost per mile be lower with air disc brakes? Is that extra cost worth it? When it comes to a trailer, it gets even worse because most people view trailers as nothing more than a box on wheels and are not as concerned with protecting the investment the fleet has made in that trailer. So, does air disc brakes lower cost per mile and are they worth the initial cost? Well, to answer that properly, we really need to talk about two things. One, we must establish the differences between the air disc brake system and the traditional SCAM drum brake system. And then two, we must compare the maintenance that is involved to either style of brakes to keep them in good working order and to keep the vehicle within regulations and safely operating on the road. So let's compare air disc brakes versus traditional drum brakes. To begin with, we've already established that air disc brakes are going to cost on average $1,200 to $1,500 more per axle than a traditional drum brake setup when you order the new truck or trailer. So right away, air disc brakes cost more initially. But according to several industry insiders, I've been assured that air disc brakes are less expensive when purchasing replacement parts later on and that there is a lot less downtime. Assuming that is true, then the additional initial cost of the air disc brake should pay for themselves over the lifetime of the vehicle. So then we have a question of, are you willing to put the money up front and pay up front to save later or not? On the flip side, traditional drum brakes are less expensive initially, so you're going to spend less money. But you must do more maintenance and replace more parts over the lifetime of the vehicle, which drives up the total cost of ownership and contributes to a higher cost per mile. Another factor that you shouldn't forget about really is the performance of the brake itself, what's happening in the real world on the road. Due to the potential for serious damage, the trucking industry is highly regulated. Over the years, the braking distances have been shrinking. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, revised the braking standards about 10 years ago and phased in the requirements over four years. The old braking distances were 60 miles per hour to a dead stop in 355 feet. 
As of 2012, all models, 2012 and newer, are required to meet the revised braking distance of 60 miles per hour to a dead stop in a mere 235 feet. So in order to achieve those braking distances with traditional drum and S-cam brakes, the width of the front shoes has increased steadily from 5 inches to now as much as 7. And on the rear shoes, the width sometimes has been increased from 7 to 8 and 5 eighths. These increased sizes achieve the required braking distances but are more expensive than the smaller shoes that were standard prior to the change in those braking distance requirements. You know, think about it. If you went from a five inch shoe back in the day and a seven inch Q, and now you have an eight and five eighths Q plus on the rear, and you've got a six or seven inch shoe on the front, you're just spending more for those traditional S cam brakes. Any way you look at it, those shorter braking distances means that your traditional drum brakes are going to work harder, they're going to create more heat, and you're more susceptible to things like brake fade. Combine that with going after a purchase price approach to buying your brakes and you could get yourself into trouble pretty quick. Now, when you have more heat, you get brake fade and brake fade is the enemy of every truck driver. It puts the driver, the truck and the trailer and other motorists at risk. According to one independent video by Northern Central Utility, in an emergency braking situation, air disc brakes will stop that truck and trailer in only 165 feet. Now, that's far less than even the NHTSA requires. This reduced stopping distance would be the difference between a collision and a near miss where everyone is safe and no collision occurs. So I don't know about you, but when I look at that situation, if a collision does occur, the potential injury to drivers and other motorists, the liability if the collision is considered your fault or the driver that you hired's fault, and the damage done to the equipment will pretty much obliterate any savings because of purchasing the traditional drum brake technology on your truck and trailer instead of the air disc brakes. I mean, that little bit of difference in price up front is completely gone in any collision. So that's certainly something to consider when making the decision the next time you're buying a truck and trailer. Do you have S-CAM brakes or do you spend the extra money today for the air disc brakes and save later? But are you really saving when it comes to maintenance and the total cost of ownership? And we have to realistically look at that. And according to several sources, air disc brakes are reportedly easier to maintain. It takes less time to do a brake job. There are less wear parts and less replacement parts. So for example, you don't have to worry about slack adjusters, S-cams, bushings, and cam tubes. And the cost of the air disc brake replacement parts has come down 30% in the last 10 years. So when you combine all of that, really there's a strong case to say that air disc brakes are cheaper in the long run. Now, regardless of whether you employ your own technicians or you send your equipment to a repair shop, the labor is going to be the highest cost in a brake job. If your mechanic can do a wheel 30% faster when changing air disc brakes over changing the traditional S-cam brakes, and he's replacing less wear parts, then that is going to translate into a lower cost per mile for you, and you're going to make more money despite the initial cost of the air disc brakes when buying the new truck or trailer. Now, the decision is yours, but assuming that you are convinced that air disc brakes are the way to go, I wanted to share some best practices to maintain your air disc brake system to help you get a better understanding of why we say that they are easier to maintain than traditional drum brakes. So, number one, there are no grease fittings and you can't measure brake stroke. Just let that sink in for a minute. There's no grease fittings on an air disc brake system and you don't have to measure brake stroke. That means there's a lot less maintenance. What you do have to do is you have to monitor the brake caliper to make sure that it is free floating. And that's a visual inspection. So again, think about the difference in time between a quick visual inspection, is the caliper free floating? Yes, great versus having to measure brake stroke and constantly adjust things and having to grease everything. Now two, you wanna visually inspect your rotor to make sure that there are no cracks. On the Bendix rotor, there's a chamfer on the rotor that is a, like a wear indicator that you would see on a traditional S-cam brake. That chamfer will let you know visually if that rotor needs to be changed. Again, think about the difference of just a quick visual inspection versus everything that goes into inspecting traditional S-cam brakes. Number three, there is a hash mark on the carrier and the caliper. 
And when those hash marks line up, it's time to change the brake pad. So again, this is a visual inspection, very quick, very easy to inspect and to know whether or not it's time for new brake pads. And number four, the only other maintenance that you'll do is looking for missing parts, looking for loose bolts or a leaky air chamber. And that's it. So I hope that when you look at these tech tips, you can immediately see that the air disc brake system is much easier to maintain. There's a lot less moving parts to replace, a lot less wear parts than in the traditional S-cam brake setup. Now contrast that with a traditional drum brake setup. Think about all the wear parts. You have slack adjusters, S-cams, bushings, cam tubes, spring brakes, spiders, drums, brake shoes, and I'm probably missing a couple other wear parts that I'm forgetting. Then you have adjusting, greasing, and the never-ending maintenance. Now that all takes time, and time is money, and it's driving up your cost per mile. Now I get it. When things are tight financially, it just feels wrong to spend more money on anything. And I had my own contracting business for six years, and trust me, I get it when receivables are low, payables are high, and cash flow seems like a mythical thing, spending more money is hard. But when things cost you more and you can't see the costs, those hidden costs of things like additional labor when doing traditional drum breaks, it really messes with your overall financial performance because you don't see the costs coming. So you do an analysis of where you think you should be with profit and cash flow, and it never seems to materialize. And that's because you have these hidden costs that you're not calculating for. So if you can make sure that your costs are more fixed by investing in a technology that is more consistent and gives you a more accurate maintenance cost, then your overall financial performance is going to be more accurate. You're going to be able to project more accurately, and that's going to help you make better decisions. Now, again, this is your decision, but I do hope that you consider it carefully when you're deciding whether or not to have air disc brakes on your next truck or trailer. You've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and I sell solutions that lower costs per mile and increase profits for fleets and repair shops that repair commercial vehicles. If you would like to schedule a 50-minute call with me to talk about your specific situation, go to heavydutypartsreport.com, and in the show notes of this episode, there is a link to schedule a 15-minute call. While you're there, there's also a link to subscribe to the podcast. And if you have time, why not rate and review the podcast? This is going to really help me to grow my audience. Remember to focus on cost per mile over purchase price, and let's keep those trucks and trailers rolling. Oh,